In today's video, I want to share with you a brand new bunch defense or kind of an expansion to a bunch defense that I talked about a couple of days ago. This is something that you can utilize to defend gun bunch in a variety of different ways. And in this video, we're going to walk you through step by step what this defense is actually going to be very effective to do and some of the counters uh, to some of the best passing concepts in Madden 22 uh, out of the gun bunch. So if you're new to the channel, I want to ask you to go ahead and to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel. And also, I just want to let you know that if you're new to the channel and you've not picked up our uh, nickel 335 wide defensive guide yet, um, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to my Patreon membership. That is where you can get access to all of my Madden 22 ebooks. I've got 18 offensive and defensive guides in the Patreon membership. So if you want to get access to it, again, there's a link in the description below. The cool part about the membership is you also get access to any new ebooks that we release in the coming weeks. Uh, while your subscription is active, you also get any access to any updates to our ebooks, which we typically update probably two to four times a week with new material on these ebooks and schemes and, and explaining different adjustments and different things that you can do. So the cool part about it is basically you get everything and you get everything for only $10 a month. And as long as your membership's active, you'll always get everything uh, content wise from me. So if you wanna get access to that, there's a link in the description where you can sign up. I've got a ton of deep dive stuff in there. We actually just get the other day put out a one hour and 15 minute 335 wide update. Um, that is actually kind of the first installment of a series of things we're gonna be doing, explaining our coverage a little bit more in depth. So if you wanna check that out, again, there's a link in the description below. All right, so let's take a look here at, we're in the 46 playbook. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look here. I've got cover four show two. This is a great coverage defense. We're gonna be talking about this as our primary coverage defense in this video. And I'm gonna be walking you through um, kind of some key adjustments that you can make out of this. We're gonna come out in three, three, five normal so that we can get cross manning uh, adjustments on our linebackers and this is out of the 4-6 playbook okay so what we're gonna do when we talk about defending gun bunch is there's a couple key things we want to try to figure out here so the first one is we want to try to at least establish a little bit of a precedent for them to have to block their linebackers so occasionally what I'll do is I'll send five so all I did was I just audible to cover four show two I crashed my line out, I blitzed my linebackers, and I QB contained. Now, what that's going to do, and I'm going to stand right here. What you're going to notice is if the running back blocks, there should still be good pressure on the quarterback. And I'll show that again. So, again, just audible to uh, cover four, show two, blitz your linebackers, crash your line up, QB contained, you're going to stand right here. And most of the time, there's going to be this nice looping pressure at the quarterback so what this does is it tells the quarterback, hey, I've got to block my tight end. Now, we're not going to blitz five every time. I promise you, you don't want to do that this year. But if the, they have to block their tight end, as you can see, they have to block their tight end. Okay. Now, we can do this pressure in a variety of different ways also. So it doesn't just have to be out of cover four, show two. We could do this out of Mike Blitz three, where our linebackers are already blitzing, as you can see right here, and run something like this. The key with this coverage or the, with, with the defense is you want to try to force some issues. So, for example, they love. we know that bunch players love to run seam wheels for the running back. So one little trick is we can man the safety up on the number one receiver and we can man the corner up on the running back. Just give us a better matchup on the running back, basically. And if they try to do that, now what you'll see here is this corner does cover it fairly decently. Doesn't stop it, but it is out there. There's a, a deterrent and it can jump it every now and then. So if you're, you're you're kind of setting them up a little bit, okay? You're wanting to establish that you can send pressure. So my favorite blitz is Mike Blitz 3. And then what we're going to do off of this is um, we're going to go ahead and vert hook this guy on the slot. We're going to shade our coverage down. That's going to help that vert hook play better. And then we're going to man up the running back, do that little switch technique right there with the contain and now what you're going to see is if they try to run a true four verticals your primary run is here and you see that we play fairly decently okay we're not going to play perfect but we do play decently so that's going to get them into this position where they're going to have to block their tight end another way that i can do this same basic blitzing concept is this right here this is mike blitz three now what i like to do with this i actually like to swap my safety so we're going to man up the safety on the left 
on the tight end, and we're going to man up the safety on the right on the running back. So you see how I crisscross them? What this does um, against, against something like a verticals or something like these wheels is it gets this crossing action where I can't throw an inside pass lead on those wheels because it's going to throw it right into the running lane of the player. So I've got a couple different key little blitzes that I'm going to tee up. Then what I like to do is play coverage. And again, you want to kind of mix and match. You don't want to play coverage every down. You don't want to blitz every down. But you want them in a position where they have to kind of at least respect your pressure um, uh, with their offense. Okay? So now I'm going to go to cover four, show two, and play coverage. So I blitz my user. I'm going to crash my line out. And then from there, we're going to make some key adjustments to our coverage. The first adjustment we're going to make um, pretty much almost every single time is we're going to shade our coverage over the top. Now, why do I like to do that? For two reasons. First reason is I want curl flats on the field that's going to help us stop anything under 10 yards. Slants, crosser, slants, drag routes, out routes, running back uh, wheels. It's going to help us with some of that stuff. Okay. The next reason why is because I don't want to get bombed on the solo receiver side. I don't want any streak to get over the top and be able to easily just run over the top of me. This, and then and then now what we're going to do off of this is we're going to have some key situational adjustments to help defend the bunch. What I like to do is I like to bluff blitz the defensive end on the right or the left side of the screen. That's going to help us um, defend the running back in this offense. Okay. Then what I like to do and really, really important is we're going to man the linebacker up on the slot receiver. So you see we got that linebacker and man coverage on the slot receiver. If you want to, you can man up the slot corner on the slot receiver. But I'm just telling you from experience, I like to man the linebacker up. I've just had better results with that because I'm going to get a jam from the slot receiver and man coverage on, the, on top of that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to man that backside safety up on the tight end. Now, what this does is if the tight end goes on a route, he's going to guard him. But let's say, for example, that they run a bunch trail and they block this guy. Okay, so they do something like this. Watch the safety on the left. What you'll see is he is now a middle of the field defender and he will actually guard that post that is so problematic uh, to some of our defenses out of match. So as you can see there, it really does a good job of defending them. So again, the adjustments are go to cover four, show two. We're going to press. We're going to shade our coverage up. We're going to then man up our linebacker on the slot. We're going to bluff blitz the defensive end on the running back side. And then we're going to cross man the safety on the left onto the tight end. Now let's say the tight end goes out on a route and let's say they run verticals. You've got a three wreck over there that is designed to guard the running back if he goes out on a route. So he's going to go guard the running back. You're really responsible for that crosser right there. Okay. Now, if you need, if you're having issues with this, um, with this, with this uh, three rack, you can spread your defensive line, and that will significantly help it. So, again, we're going to go here, here, boom, and then I'm going to run the same verticals play. Now you'll see here, see him get out. Actually, I probably should have shifted to the left, but you see the idea. Very good coverage on that. That three rack zone is a little finicky, um, but generally speaking. If, it's, if my line is shifted to the left, or even if it's spread most of the time, he'll go guard the running back. You just need him to go guard the running back. That's the key to the whole defense. So again here, make sure I make sure you pass commit too. That's very helpful. Um, but anyways, so that's uh, that. Let's talk about mesh spot. So mesh spot typically looks like something like this. This is very good defense on this play. If they try to throw that, that's a baity pick. You will get a lot of picks on that route. I promise you that. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this coverage is let's say that they try to run um, some tra some traditional uh, floods to the, to the bunch side. Okay, so just traditional vanilla flood concept to the bunch side out of Z-Spot and go. So you see here, what you're going to get here is you're going to get this match coverage that is going to really bag up that concept. It's going to be very difficult for them to consistently live on a corner route to the right, whether it be from the inside or the outside guys. So, for example, if I give them something like this, this defense is very equipped um, to stop this concept in particular. Very equipped to stop this concept. So here... You're getting the outside receiver of the bunch going to get a nice jam, and then we get this nice match 
that will typically hang with him on that side. Now, uh, one other thing that I did want to point out with this coverage is you can, like I said, you can man the slot up on the slot receiver, the slot corner up on the slot receiver. That will give you a pretty good little press technique on him. And <clears throat> typically speaking, um, he's going to really kind of bag up that corner route. Very well defended, as you can see. Okay. So you don't have too much to worry about in the context of corner routes. Um, another thing that you can do with this, I really like the cross man of the tight end. I, I can't tell you how much I love the cross man of the tight end. But something else that you can do um, with within this is you can actually man that linebacker up on the tight end. Now what you need to pay attention to a little bit is if you cross man the number two receiver. Let me show you something with that real quick. Um, if you cross man that number two receiver, what you're going to see, the point man of the bunch, you're going to see your match play a little bit worse. As you can see right there, it's just not quite as, as secure as it was before. Uh, so that's something that you want to pay attention to a little bit. With the linebacker over here, you have a ton of flexibility because you have essentially a, a heavy, heavy um, ability to get heavy coverage over here. Now, one thing you can also do is throw a vert hook here. This is going to significantly help with your, uh, with your wheels. The big problem becomes that you will need to deep half that safety on the right if you want to go with something like that. The reason why is because of this dig return play. This streak right here on dig return, um, what you'll see is if you have it like this, now your deep half safety can kind of get in the area and play that. If you don't, that's typically going to be a one-play score because you don't have any man coverage on that receiver. So that is something that you need to pay attention to a little bit with this scheme and how you understand um, you know, where you can get bombed. And really it does revolve around that number two receiver, right? Out of dig return, if I just take this guy and streak him, what you get a lot of the time is you see here this jam almost stops it, but it, then, it, then again it doesn't, you see right there. So that's just something you have to pay attention to a little bit. I love the, the slot man up or the linebacker man up on that player, primarily because a lot of times they don't even flood the bunch side, and when they do anymore, it's really this concept that they're hitting you with on the flood, which is fairly easy to defend with this. You see that outside quarter should do a really good job of defending that, making that a difficult throw. So that's a little bit about bunch defense uh, within this. And then again, like I said, I can't stress the importance. I really can't. You got to understand tendencies. If they're not calling flood, um, then you don't have to honor it. But if they're calling this flood play every play, this is a really, really good defense for that because you've got really, really good coverage on the tight end and really good coverage on uh, the number two receiver. So what you're going to see here is this out route that they're going to try to force feed against match is going to get picked because of your curl flat defender that you're going to have over in that area. So overall, this is a very, very nice little coverage. You really ideally are going to be lurking primarily crossing routes in this Um and, and you could easily do a defense like this right here. Again, the major problem, I talked about it before, is if they go to something like this, there's a good chance they're going to burn you over the top. That's why I like to have the man coverage on the slot. Okay, If I have the man coverage on the slot, then that typically is not going to happen. Okay. Um, also, one other thing real quick. If you do deep half, um, if you do deep half over here on the bunch side, that's fine. The problem is it doesn't always work. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's say you get the play uh, dig return and they streak this guy up the seam. You'll see this deep half. I've got inside position. So this could be a potential aggressive catch. So that's just something you have to pay attention to within the coverage. But if you go, you know, and again, we talked about the importance of making them block their tight end. So let's say you get them in a position where, let's say you get them in a position where you, you know they have to block their tight end, right? So you're in something like this. And then you've got your three rec, of course, over in this area. And then you've got your quarter on the left side. What you'll get with something like this now is let's say that they go to verticals and they streak this guy right here, another good coverage beater. You'll see here that this plays it fairly well. Okay, So there is some val validity to the deep half adjustment. The primary reason to deep half is because then it will allow, and I'll show you this real quick on the flood, it will allow a little bit better coverage on that route right there, okay? So it does, if they're throwing a lot more corner routes, you might want to consider that deep half. If they're throwing more crossers and wheels, 
then I would go with the, the coverage that I just said in the beginning. When you man the slot up and you have two purples and you man up the tight end, it becomes very difficult for them to throw wheel routes. And so they have to actually work a little bit more. Uh, dig return, for example, another good match play they're going to try to hit. That zig route is not super clean. It really isn't. Um, if you And you as a user have the ability to kind of hang in that area because of everything else that we're doing. We don't have to worry too much. If you think about it, we don't have to worry too much about the backside in. So what we can do is, let's say they go dig return. We can go here, and then we can jump down here and make that a tough throw to that in route. Okay. So anyways, that's how you can kind of craft your bunch defense a little bit. Uh, again, it, it's very such you, you want to make it a little bit more situational. Okay, so like the deep half adjustment here is really good if you're on this hash mark. But if they run their bunch to the short side, then it complete it's it's not a necessarily great little adjustment. So you might want to go with something like this on the wide side, and then something like I showed you in the beginning on the other side. You know, but you can get pretty decent little coverage here. Um, you can also go ahead if you want to and you can bluff blitz here on the left so you have that three rack right there and then you can actually take this backside lineman and man him up on the running back and then you cross man the tight end so you see now this is a real adjusting but it is a, it's still going to be basically the same concept um, but you still get a three rack now you get a little bit of extra uh, yellow zone coverage on that crosser and then you've got that great cross man on the um, on the running back and on the tight end. So that is the defense. Now, we in the in the Patreon, we actually teach you a really, really good red zone defense for a bunch um, and also kind of how to adjust this and how to scheme around this more than just one coverage, but how to actually put a game plan together against some of the best bunch players in the world. So if you want to check all that out, there's a link in the description down below. You can sign up for the Patreon for just $10 a month and it unlocks everything, all the ebooks, all the updates to all the ebooks, and uh, it's just a great resource for you. So thanks for watching. If you want to get that Patreon membership, head on down to the description of the video and click the link that I put down there for you.